I welcome you all to my talk about 4,000 serial FPG sensors interrogated with a hybrid CDM WDM system. My name is Marek Götten and I'm from the University of Applied Sciences in Wismar in Germany, as well as from the Technical University of Madrid from Spain. First, I want to introduce to you the hybrid CDM-WDM interrogation scheme, then the design of serial sensor network. Afterwards, I show you a proof of concept, and then I tell you something about the polarization effects on in the interrogator scheme, and at the end, a summary. In the hybrid CDM-WDM interrogation scheme, broadband light from an SLED is modulated according to a specific code sequence. This modulated light enters the sensor network via the circulator. In the network, each FPG reflects this code due to the different locations, so different optical path lengths. All codes arrive with a different time delay at the second modulator. This modulator is driven with the same code, but shifted in time. The time shift can be used to synchronize to a specific code reflected by an FPG. This code can ideally pass the second modulator and reach the spectrometer. All time shifted codes cannot pass entirely the modulator and this light partly arrives at the spectrometer. A second modulation step is introduced where the second modulator is driven with the inverted code. Now the synchronized code cannot pass the modulator, but the other coded light can partly pass, so that this spectrum only contains light from the partly passed code sequences. Now we have two spectra, where the first one contains the synchronized code light and a part of all other codes, and the second one contains only a part of the light from all other codes. Ideally, the passing part is equal in both correlation steps. This depends on the code. Subtracting both spectra, the different spectrum contains only the light from the synchronized code, so the refracted light of a specific FPG. Here you can see the design of our 4000 FPG sensor network. The FPG sensors are so-called draw tower gratings, so DTGs. We have several WDM sections with sensors operating at different wavelengths. These are multiplexed by WDM. There are 80 different wavelengths in one section. First all even wavelengths upwards and then all odd wavelengths downwards. The distance between the sensors is set to 2.5 cm. The whole network contains 50 of these identical sections. They are placed right behind each other so that the distance between the last and the first sensor of the next section is also 2.5 cm. Like this, an equal distribution of the sensors is achieved. The distance between sensors operating at the same wavelength is 2 meters, which equals also the section length. This distance is crucial for the CDM part. The chip duration, so the lengths of ones and zeros of the code, is dependent on this. In the table you see the dependence. A section length of 2 meters requires a chip duration of maximum 10 nanoseconds and a distance of 1 meter, for example a duration of 5 nanoseconds. With 50 sections and 80 FPGs in each section, a total number of 4000 serial FPGs in one fiber is achieved. Now I can show you the proof of concept. In this plot you can see all 4000 sensors, 80 different wavelengths and 50 sections. Actually our network consists of two 2000 sensor networks that are spliced together. The diagram shows a good suppression of interference at the beginning of the first network, in between both networks and at the end. When CDM does not work properly, interference of sensors at these wavelengths should appear. You also see the up and down movement of the Bragg wavelengths within a section. For this plot, the time delay of the second modulator is changed in nanosecond steps and each time a different spectrum is acquired. This time delay can be converted into a location due to the known velocity of light inside the fiber. In order to have a better look, I took out a single different spectrum of the last sensors of the network. Here you can see the spectral power density plotted over the wavelength. 
These are the sensor numbers 3986 to number 4000. The red curve shows the sensors without applied strain. Due to the special wavelength configuration, we only see the odd wavelength and no even wavelength peaks. This is another proof of the good suppression of interference. When applying strain to the sensor numbers 3987 to number 4000, the peaks shift towards higher wavelengths. The most right sensor was not strained, so it stays at its current position. By shifting the peak wavelength, we see the interference of all other 49 sensors at these wavelengths, which is very low. The reflectance of all sensors is around 1%. After showing the proof of concept, I want to get a little bit into details with the polarization effects on the interrogator scheme. The broadband light of the SLED is depolarized. The first modulator is a Mazenda modulator, which is polarization dependent. So, the output light of this modulator is partly polarized. Since there are different optical path lengths within the network, the state of polarization in front of the second modulator is changing. The modulation result is highly depending on the state of polarization. Therefore, different codes of different FPGs are treated differently, which can be seen in the top left diagram. Some peaks are significantly higher than others. When changing the state of polarization in front of the second modulator, for example with the polarization controller, the peak height fluctuates. The top right diagram shows all measurements in grey and the mean of all measurements in red. The suppression of interference is also not that good anymore, since small peaks in between the actual wavelength of peaks appear. This here is again the last part of the last section, which only contains every second wavelength. To improve this behavior, it is beneficial to have depolarized light in front of the second modulator. Then polarization changes are not visible anymore and do not affect the modula modulation result. The first attempt was a polarization scrambler. In order to have depolarized light for each chip of the code sequence, we need several changes of the polarization within one chip duration. For 5 nanoseconds, this means for example every nanosecond a different polarization. The scrambler needs to work at 1 GHz. The scrambler was too slow so that the result is similar to the top right diagram. Another idea is to use a semiconductor optical amplifier, an SOA. It is driven with current and when no current is applied, the attenuation of light is very high. So it can be used as a modulator as well. The advantage is its independence on the polarization. Therefore, the light is still depolarized after the first modulator and arrives mainly depolarized at the second modulator. Without changing the polarization controller, the difference spectrum is depicted in the bottom left diagram. The overall standard deviation for each pixel is around 16 counts, similar to the Mazenda modulator. But the suppression of the interference is way better. The reason is a better blocking of the light for logical zero than a Mazenda modulator. When changing the polarization with the controller, the peak heights stay more stable than before. The interference suppression is still very good and the peaks are in total higher than with the Mazenda modulator. The attempt to use the SOA as a modulation device shows much improvement in the CDM-WDM system. To summarize this presentation, the hybrid CDM-WDM interrogation scheme is suitable to multiplex a large amount of serial optical sensors. In this case, 50 sensors at the same wavelength multiplied with 80 sensors at different wavelength, so 4000 sensors. The length of the section defines the modulation speed. So far we could down, go down to 1 meter, which means a chip duration of 5 nanoseconds. By means of an SOA as the first modulation device, a better suppression of interference is achieved. Additionally, the polarization effects are massively reduced so that the different spectrum is more stable when moving the fiber and changing the state of polarization. Like this, the actual wavelength shift, in order to use the sensor for measuring, is acquired with lower impact of a fluctuating peak height. In general, this interrogation scheme has a lot of potential for interrogating a large amount of serial optical fiber sensors. 
Thank you very much for your attention and I hope I am able to answer some questions concerning our work. Thank you.